let's knock on wood because we're going to be adding custom wood to Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back in Intelligia once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom wood to Minecraft. Now, this is actually deceptively harder than you might expect, because there are some very key things that you will need to keep in mind. So we're just going to get started. In our mod blocks class, we have to create a bunch of blocks. This includes the log, the wood, and then also the stripped variants as well as planks. Now, the thing is that usually we can just take the rotated pillar block for this. However, that means that we then don't have proper flammability for this, which I find kind of weird. I don't know why Forge hasn't made it easier to actually implement this, but we actually will need a custom block for this. And so in our custom package, right click new Java class, and this is going to be the mod flammable rotated pillar block. I know that's insane, but this is how we're going to call this. And this is going to extend the rotated pillar block class. And we're just going to hover over this, create constructor matching super. And then we're just going to rename this um, shift and F6 to properties just so that it looks a little bit nicer. And then we need to overwrite three methods. We need to overwrite the is flammable method, which then just returns true, kind of like this. And then the get flammability method which is going to return in this case five because the flammability of logs and wood is five. And then we also need to override the get spread fire speed, which is also going to be five. So for each new log or wood that we actually want to create, we have to use the mod flammable rotated pillar block and not the normal rotated pillar block. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's now then actually create those blocks. We're just going to take the orchid ones and we're going to say this is the red wood underscore log and then of course in the name as well redwood underscore log and this is now the mod flammable rotated pillar block with of course only the block behavior right here and then we're actually going to copy over the block oak and this is the oak log right here so we're going to basically take the block behavior properties from the oak log making this pretty much almost uh, you know exactly the same and then we're just going to copy this a, a bunch of times namely five times so that we have five of those in here and the second one is going to be the redwood wood now the name here is kind of funny but all things considered it's going to be fine and this is also going to take this from the wood actually this shouldn't matter too much but I, just in case i rather have this then this is going to be the stripped redwood log and then of course in the name pretty much the same thing strip underscore redwood log and then here as well stripped underscore redwood log actually redwood wood in this case wood and then here the same stripped stripped underscore redwood underscore wood so now those three or those four rather are done and now on to the planks so the planks are actually also fairly interesting because they are going to be this, the planks, and they are actually just going to be a normal block here. And there's going to be the oak underscore planks. And let's also change those. So this is the stripped oak log. And this is going to be the stripped oak wood, just so that we have this. And the planks here are actually very interesting because we're going to make this an anonymous class. Because they are, of course, just the normal, well, block here in this case. And we actually have to then inside of the instead of those curly brackets here in the anonymous class we're just going to uh, overwrite the same methods that we've overridden in the mod flammable rotated pillar block class with a true right here get flammability is going to be a 20 in this case because the planks are actually more flammable and then the fire spread is going to be the same so get fire spread is going to be five so to actually show you, uh, I can actually show you where this is usually done. So we can actually see the block here inside of the fire block, right? This is actually all set in here. So fire block that's set flammable. However, we can't actually access this because set flammable is private. There are some other ways that we can do this. However, the thing about it is that I believe that, you know, the way that, you know, Forge has done it is that you can basically override these methods in the blocks. I personally think that this is not the best solution. However, I will also admit that I'm not too familiar with the back end, let's say, of how everything works. So maybe, in, you know, this is the best solution at hand. Who knows? However, this is what we need to do to make this properly flammable. 
if you have multiple planks, then I would suggest making a flammable plank block as well that just extends the block and then overrides these methods as well because if you have like 20 planks and they're all this long, then the mod blocks you know, class is going to get way too long. I definitely suggest that. However, the next thing which is kind of interesting is going to be the how are we going to make those strippable? Well, we're going to make those strippable by actually changing something. So usually the stripping is done in the X item, right? So we're going to take a look at this. So you can see that this has a map that is strippables. And this basically just maps a particular block to a particular strip block. Nothing too crazy, all as well. Now the real issue here is that this is both protected and final. So we can actually access this and change this. So for that, we're going to need to use access transformers. So those are a tool which is actually very, very cool. Meaning we can basically say, hey, you know what? I don't like that this is protected, make it this public. And I also don't like this, this is final, make this non-final. We can just do that. So we have to first go into our build.gradle file and we have to search a little bit until we find the following phrase or the following thing. And that is right here, access transformer, based often under the mappings here. We just have to uncomment this and then as you can see in the source main resources meta in folder, we have to create a um, a file that is called exactly this. So in the meta in folder, right click new file. And I've actually copied this over from here, making sure that this is written correctly. This is very, very important. That this is written correctly. Otherwise it will not work. And also out, you know, comment this so that it looks like this. And we're not yet going to refresh this because what we need to do then afterwards is we actually need to go to a, well, either a mapping spot that you might have available uh, on a Discord server. Otherwise, I have a, you know, mapping spot on my own Discord server and we need to put in the following command. So if I'm not mistaken, the command should be MMSF. So this would be the querying the Mojang mappings for a field. Okay, and then we have to take in the name of the field. So that is strippables in this case. So we're going to put this in and let's see if this works. And it does. So you can see mappings 171. And then you have this AT right here, meaning that we can just take this, right? Right click copy or, you know, just do it like this. Control C. And then we paste this into the access transformer CFG. It's very important. After the public, we need to put in a dash F here. So minus F so that it basically makes this non-final. And now this should work totally fine. So thank you very much for the mappings here link to the discord is of course in the description below as well if you need it and then after this is done this is commented out and we've created the file then we will have to load the gradle changes if this doesn't appear to you you can also open this and you know reload all gradle projects as well this also would work but we're just going to do this now this is going to take a little while so let's just you know settle in and wait until this is done all right, and here we are. Once we get a build successful, everything is great. So while this is going through, you might encounter a lot of red. Do not worry about it. If you get a build successful at the end, everything is fine. And what you will also notice is that the still remaining open, you know, X item has a different, you know, like icon here. And that's because this has actually changed. So we can now go outside of this, close this basically. And you can see that if I were to search X item again, we will have the same thing. However, what I can do is I can actually go into my mod items and I can middle mouse button click on the X item here. And then it's actually going to reload the correct class and you can see public static. So all of a sudden it's no longer final and it's no longer protected, but this is actually public. So we can access this and we're going to change this inside of our setup method. So in the tutorial mod class should be at the very bottom, the FML common setup event. And what we're going to do is we're going to basically, first of all, call event.inqwork. And then we're going to make a runnable in here. So this is just parentheses open and closed. The, you know, let's say the supplier arrow, the, the arrow that we've used for the supplier. Then open, um, open curly brackets and then everything goes inside of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say xitem.strippables is equal to a new immutable, uh, immutable map.builder of type block block. And then we're going to say, first of all, put all, because what we want to do is we want to put in the strippables that are already in there, and then we want to add our own. So then we're going to say put, and this is going to be the mod blocks dot redwood log dot get. And then the second parameter is going to be mod blocks dot strip redwood log dot get. And then that's pretty much it. And then the second one, we're also going to put in the redwood wood, of course, redwood wood dot get comma, and then mod blocks dot red. Uh, 
uh, stripped red wood look uh, wood there you go and then get that as well and at the very end a build and then a semicolon and as you can see so first of all this is going to oh this is actually not a put this is put all there you go and then this is also going to work and that's pretty much it so this then simply adds in all of the actual strippables that are already in there and then also adds our own strippables so that's very important of course that we add in the already existing ones because otherwise that for example if other mods were to do this then they would maybe add them in there and if we wouldn't add those in then th those would also all of a sudden not be in there. So it's kind of important that we do it like this. And that is pretty much all that we need to do here. Otherwise, the rest is pretty much only the JSON files that are remaining. So the actual registration is done, the you know access transformers and all of that is already done here. So now let's move on to the JSON files. The JSON files are of course linked in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists as well. Now overall, the actual JSON files, the block states JSON here are not that crazy. The Redwood log, as you can see, is of course a rotated pillar block and that is has basically three you know access variables, access X, Y and Z, and then points to two different models and is also rotated, you know, based on what you actually need. The rest of them are actually all similar. They're, they basically look exactly the same, just pointing to different models and the planks are just normal, uh, normal block states JSON file. And then in the en underscore us json, we're immediately going to add the translation as well, just so that I don't forget this as well, then we don't want that. There you go. Copy that in. This is, of course, also available to you. Normal translation, nothing too crazy here. Now, what might be crazy are the block model files, because there's actually quite a few of them, as you might as well have seen there. So we're actually going to have to copy over all of those ones. And that is, as you can see, seven of them in total. We have the log, the log horizontal, with the planks, the wood, the stripped redwood wood, and then the normal wood in horizontal and non-horizontal. So it's pretty crazy here, No, not to worry. Overall, they're all fairly similar. They follow the cube uh, column here, and we can also take a look at some of the other ones, cube column, and this is just then cube column horizontal. As you can see, nothing too crazy. Of course, with a with the log, we have something on the side, right? So we have the sort of bark on the side and then a top and the bottom at the end. Should all be fairly, you know, straightforward, if I do say so myself. And now on to the item models. There's They're just normal item models, really, so nothing too crazy once again. Let's copy over all five of them. And as you can see, the planks just point to the planks. And then the wood points to the wood. Log just point, points to the normal log. So nothing crazy here, actually, to be honest. Normal item models. And then the textures we need as well, of course. Once again, available for you for download in the description below. Nothing too crazy there. And those are actually only five textures that we need. So that's kind of nice. And that's pretty much all that we need to do. Now what we're going to do immediately is we're going to add the block to our tags. So we actually need a new tag in the Minecraft namespace. And that is going to be the logs. So right click new file logs.json. And this is just going to let's just copy over the contents here because we're just going to change this anyway. So this is tutorial mod. And this is then the redwood underscore log. And I believe we could also, for example, add the other logs to this so the stripped log and uh, whatnot we can actually take a look at this if we go down to the external libraries net Minecraft client extra 117 one in the data folder we can take a look at the tags here blocks and then there's the logs so there's first of all they have different logs for each of the well different things so you can see that for example here we have the wood stripped so all of that is actually in there so we should definitely add this as well and then there's also here are the logs, as you can see, that ha just have everything in there. And there's also the logs that burn. So logs that burn are very interesting because those are the ones that you can put into a furnace. And that just then basically works for the burning of the furnace. So in our own logs one, we're just going to add all of them. So let's just do this. So this is the redwood wood here. It's going to be the redwood log as well, but stripped. And then the last one is going to be the wood here as well. And then here, stripped underscore wood. There you go. That's pretty good. And the logs tag is also needed and very important for later when we are taking a look at the tree, because otherwise the leaves will actually decay. So let's actually copy this over as well. And we're going to say logs underscore that burn. There you go. Right, so this we're just going to keep it like this. That's totally fine. 
and now everything actually has been added so let's see if it works all right we found this in Minecraft, and as you can see everything here has been added successfully we can even right click on the actual you know the logs and the wood and it turns to well whatever we want basically so all of this has been added successfully everything works and now just so i mean obviously we have to take a look at whether or not it burns all as well right let's just add one here and it should actually work fairly well so it should you know begin to spread and also you know the blocks should start to decay as well so let's just hope that that works as well as intended let's say and there you go so that now spread actually and now it is it keeps spreading and there you go. So this is actually how easy it can be. Oh my lord, now I can't control the, here, the fire anymore. All right, so that pretty much is it for the uh, adding of the wood. Right, just like I said in the very beginning, adding the wood actually a bit more complicated than you might think at first glance, especially if you want all of the functionality of the wood well in your game as well. So that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.